G'day there, Jess here. Welcome to the Great and Thrive podcast. This is episode 285. And today I have an interview for you with Cassandra Pons of Lazy Girl Lingerie. I've known Cass for many years now. She was a longtime member of the Thriver Circle, my membership community for makers, where she worked her way through my Your Year to Thrive course and in, participated in our live calls and chats and workshops. And now she has a full time, very successful business of her very own. Uh, I'm really proud of what she's achieved and it's been really great to watch her grow her business over the last few years and she's done it really smartly. So I wanted her to come on the show and share her story and her journey with you today in the hope that you will pick up some useful tidbits of knowledge from what she's managed to achieve over the last few years. Before we begin, I just want to give a shout out and thank you to all the members of the Thriver Circle, past, present and future. Uh, I don't run ads on the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, you might get a few ads. Uh, So the podcast itself is fully supported by my students, the people who choose to become a member of the Thriver Circle or take one of my other courses. So thank you for everybody. Uh, to everybody who has supported the show if you would like to support the show you can do the same you can also uh, leave me a rating or review over on apple Podcasts, spotify or over on the grand thrive facebook page i would love to hear from you and know that you're enjoying the show and finding it helpful and useful so thank you so much for all that support all right let's get started with today's interview with cass Welcome everybody. I am here today with Cassandra Pons, who I know and have known for a few years. Welcome to the show, Cass. Thanks for having me, Jess. I'm really excited to be here. (laughs) I'm excited too, because I've been watching your creative evolution and journey over the last few years uh, in the Thriver Circle. And it's been really awesome to see you grow your business basically from the beginning to now where you're become really successful and that's oh. <laughs> um, what we're going to be talking about today is that evolution and how you've made that happen um, so can you just tell everybody kind of what you do and how you got started with it yeah yep yeah, absolutely so yeah I'm Cass and I am the founder of Lazy Girl Lingerie um, so I make handmade lingerie um, and so I do lingerie sleepwear a little bit of loungewear as well Um, and yeah, my whole concept with the business is making things, um, to people's measurements. Um, so I'm really passionate about diversity and inclusive sizing, and I find that the best sort of way to encapsulate that. Um, but in terms of my creative career path, I've always been a bit of a creative soul. When I was a little girl, I, um, was always making things and, um, my best friend and I started a bunny business. We would like make paper bunnies and we would design outfits for them and sell them like as catalogs to our friends. So looking back, it's kind of funny because I feel like that was my first forte into business. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And, but yeah, I was always like making things. And then later in life, uh, later in my um, teens, I sort of got into more of the fashion design sort of thing. Um, During art, I really was into like upcycling vintage clothes Um, and for my final art piece in high school I decided to do a little collection around upcycling vintage clothes Um, and my art teacher really loved the collection and she was like you should actually apply for this grant that their um, Youth Arts Queensland was um, providing in Townsville where I grew up Mm -hmm. Um, and actually won the grant which was really exciting Um, and I used the money to buy a sewing machine and a camera and it sort of just launched me into that creative scene in Townsville. Um, yeah, so it was a lot of fun. I got to meet like local designers mm. and um, intern with them. And yeah, I was sort of, after I finished school, I was working for Queensland government. So it was very much a side hustle, like mm. doing like the um, admin sort of work and then the creative work on the side. But it really got me so interested um, in that fashion scene. And it made me realise that that's what I wanted to do for my career. Can I just interject here? What high yeah. school did you go to in Townsville? Uh, I went to Pimlico. <laughs> you were the enemy. I went to Kerwin. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's okay. We can still be friends. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So, uh, world, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so you kind of had that. And then you were working a normal job. Um, yeah. Doing this on the side. Yeah. At what point did you kind of have an idea that maybe this could be a full-time thing? Um, 
Um, I think when I sort of was involved in like um, an emerging designer store in Townsville and I saw other sort of um, quite successful business women and that really inspired me to think like this isn't just like a little thing that people do on the side. This is someone's actual um, income and a business and livelihood. Um, and I saw probably the value of studying as well. Um, it, you know, you don't have to study to have a creative business, but I really wanted to do that. Um, so, yeah. So what was your qualification that you ended up with? Um, so I ended up um, moving to the Gold Coast and I studied um, a advanced diploma in applied fashion design and technology. And it was an amazing course. It like I learned so much. I really loved the um, technical like garment construction and pattern making. Um, but we also covered a lot of the IT elements and a little bit of business things as well. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. I really loved the course. And it's kind of about the connections that you make as well. Like mm -hmm. through that course, I was able to get an internship with a local bridal label. And yeah, it's about those connections and yeah, getting your skills to a point where you feel confident to sell that work to people. Mm -hmm. I feel like sewing, especially like, del you know, intricate stuff like you do, I feel like that's a very technical skill. Yeah. And, you know, especially if you're creating your own patterns, then having yeah. that, you know, training in that technical skill is incredibly yeah. useful. I mean, making clothes for bodies, you know, that no two bodies are the same. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so and the more you learn challenge. about it. Yeah. Like I remember <clears throat> in college we did, we made like a, you make like a block, which is like mm -hmm. what a pattern is like the blueprint of the pattern basically and all the girls in the class like we were a really similar age most of us look similar in appearance but you know when we did our measurements every single person was so different and I think that's where the whole light bulb came from as well like we are all so different and sizing can be frustrating like mm -hmm. I think we've all been to a shop and it's like the size that you normally wear but it doesn't fit for some reason um, so yeah, sort of those, all those little bits of the puzzles sort of came together. Yeah. Wanting to find a better way to do it. Yeah. I mean, I totally, I think probably most people watching have had that experience where like, you've got a part of your body that doesn't fit the norm, you know, like yeah. for me, my waist is smaller and my like thighs are bigger. So like yeah. finding a pair of pants that fits my thighs and my waist is exactly. really hard. I know it's yeah we and you're so right like every I think every woman and probably even men as well like mm. have the same thing but I think yeah it's it can be frustrating too <laughs> yeah definitely so yeah. um so it's nice you know that idea that somebody's making something that will fit you and your body perfectly yeah so you what at what time, sort of year did you start lazy girl lingerie um, so I've been going for it's six years this year. So I'm pretty sure that's 2016. So that was when it all sort of kicked off. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yep, yeah, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> 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 Better check. Yeah. So yeah, I started, um, and I just started really naturally. I was making things and I made an Instagram page and I just shared photos of the work that I was doing. Um, and then I made an Etsy shop because um, it was really simple to do. And I had a fair bit of interest in the Etsy shop, um, which was really exciting to sort mm -hmm. of see, you know, would people be interested in the things that I was making? Um, and, yeah, then I, as I had time, I built the website. I tried out a couple of different platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm with Shopify, which I love so much. And, yeah, I guess my approach with the business has really just been, yeah, start with what I have, do what I can, and then improve as I go. And, yeah, I guess having always having that, like, um, you know, in the beginning I had a full-time income and then I brought that down to a part-time income and having that was it almost helped me to relax and just be like, you know, I can do this at a slow and steady pace. I'm not trying to, you know, pay all my bills right now with this. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really smart. And that's definitely mm. what I encourage people to do because I think people perhaps if they haven't had a business don't realize that it just does take a good whack of time to really get things up and running. And yeah. it's a lot less stressful if you have income coming from somewhere else so you don't have to rely on it. Um, exactly. I mean, some people might, you know, thrive under the challenge of I really yeah. have to make this work or I'm yeah. not going to eat. That but... might be someone's forte, but not yeah. mine. <laughs> no, it's not mine either. Yeah. That just stresses me out. So, <laughs> And I love that you do like advocate for people to do that. Like if everyone's situation is different, but mm -hmm. not to put that pressure on yourself. Like mm -hmm. it could be a lot of pressure for someone to start a business and think, oh, like this has got to be a six-figure business right now. Mm -hmm. Like that's a lot of pressure to start with. 
Yeah. And if you have the luxury, like someone who's starting a brick and mortar shop, they don't have the luxury of keeping a full-time job yeah, and running that yeah. most, well, most of them, because you've got to be there. So yeah. for those of us who have online businesses or, you know, we do the markets on the weekend or whatever, yeah, we have the luxury yeah. of being able to do that. Uh, yeah. And I think that can be a nice safety net. And, you know, exactly. I'm all about it being a marathon, not a sprint. So yeah. if you're starting mm. a business, you should be thinking long-term. Exactly. Otherwise, yeah. what's the point? So thinking long term you're like well I don't have to rush into <laughs> you know trying to do this full time straight away I can just yeah. let it evolve and develop naturally till perhaps it reaches that point yeah that's it yeah I and that sounds like agree. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so at what point did you make that leap to going this is it this is what I'm going to do full time yeah, um, it happened really gradually for me. So, yeah, so when I started, I was working full time. Um, I worked for a really amazing bridal label and they really inspired me so much to see like what is possible in a business. I'd never seen a business like that. Um, and they were just really amazing women who I'm still friends with today. Um, and yeah, and then I sort of got to the point where I wanted to grow my business instead of growing someone else's. Um, so I transitioned to part-time and then casual work. Mm -hmm. And I found for my circumstance that like hospitality was a good fit for me because my brain kind of works a lot better in the day. So I could wake <laughs> up and do all my work on Lazy Girl and then at night go and do a couple of hours work. Um, and it was a bit of a hard slog, you know, you're quite, you know, it's a long day to sort of work all day in your business and then still be working at night. Um, but that was what worked for me. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it sort of has been for I maybe since like about July or August last year that I've been doing it completely full time. It just got to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. I had to just, yeah, <laughs> really needed the time to work on my business. And yeah, it's good. I really love it. <laughs> so uh, so we're recording this in February 2022. Yeah. So that means that last year was 2021. Now, for those outside of Australia, you might not know that here in Queensland, where we both live in Australia, we haven't had many lockdowns over the last yeah. two years of COVID. Like life was mostly normal until kind of January, well, January this year, where we opened the borders again to everybody. And now we have COVID and we have to live with it. But before that, yeah. we had only very small lockdowns. So like working in hospitality, you know, in other places in Australia and the world, yeah. that wouldn't have been so much of an option for a lot of that period of time, I guess, for a lot of people. Yeah, that's it. And but even like even still, there were still lockdowns where mm. like things were shut down. Um, and it kind of made me realize like sometimes you can I don't know, like think that a business income is risky or not stable. But in my experience, you know, in the past couple of years, like what has been my bulk of my livelihood is my business because even when, you know, hospitality did close down because of COVID, like I could always make my income through my mm -hmm. business online. So it made me really appreciate that and see, um, you know, the potential for that. Yeah, and I know, you know, there's been a lot of people who started businesses in the last two years and yeah. have done really well because of lockdowns and everybody having to shop online. And it's definitely, I think, it's made a bit of a cultural shift to online shopping, perhaps for people who weren't online shopping yeah. beforehand. So there's mm. definitely more options for people now and, and more more customers than ever before shopping I online. Um, yeah. So do you sell just in Australia or do you sell internationally as well? Um, definitely internationally as well. So I think because I started on Etsy as a platform, um, it uh, had international shipping from the beginning. And a lot of my customers have always been in the United States, mm -hmm. um, which is very interesting. But I have found since COVID that it is a lot more Australian people mm -hmm. that are shopping with me. So I find that quite interesting. Um, you know, maybe the word's just getting out a bit more and also people wanting to support small local businesses, which is really lovely. Yeah, I've actually found that as well. I didn't know whether like I had to stop kind of free shipping to the US early in COVID. And yeah, I've only just yeah. managed to do it again recently because Etsy's brought in the domestic and global shipping. Options, yeah, which has been such awesome. a good tool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, that might have had an impact on my business and other people's businesses as well. Uh, but I love the idea, you know, people are kind of, you know, realizing, hey, we need to support those local businesses and 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 really it's been really nice to see that kind of resurgence of that over the last few years so with your so you said now you're, you're on shopify are you still do you still have your etsy shop as well 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love Etsy and I'm a big fan for using it if it works for you. But yeah, I sell on I've got my website and I sell on Etsy. And I also have a few other um, drop shipping websites. Um, so there are other like larger lingerie boutiques that um, they sell like multi-brand, like mm-hmm. so all different brands. Um, and so I find that has been a really good way to sort of have, you know, your income dispersed in different areas as well. I do do a little bit of wholesale, but that's more if people come to me and would like me to do it, I'm more than happy to, but I don't spend a lot of time sort of looking for, for that. Yeah. I guess just being a small, like, you know, a small team, then it's, it's hard to do it all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm. So what got you interested in the sort of drop shipping, getting involved in those larger platforms? Was that something um, just because you're in the fashion industry, that's pretty common in that industry? Yeah, I guess it's common and I guess the people just approached me for it. Mm-hmm. So okay. there's um, one of the stores is Anya Last Two. There is an amazing, amazing lingerie. Um, it's like a luxury lingerie store in um, New York mm-hmm. and I've always admired them, but I never would have even like pitched myself to them. <laughs> and then one day she messaged me on Etsy and was like, um, I yeah, love your work. I have a little lingerie store. Would I be able to stock it? And then she mentioned who it was and I was just like fangirling, like, of course, trying to play it cool. But I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just like, you know, and ha- I think that's the beauty of being part of a uh, um, platform like Etsy is people are already like there and looking for things. So they will find you. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because I'm, I'm similar to you in that I don't chase wholesale, but if people come to me, if it's the right fit, then I'll do yeah. it. Um, and yeah. I, I think all of them have found me on Etsy. Like they've yeah, approached me through Etsy. Um, yeah, because I have a few. I've had a few American stockists and, and in other countries as well. So yeah, that's again the benefit of being on that sort of platform where people are looking for the thing. Yeah, um, and, and you can view it as like a form of a marketing as yes. well. You know, like yeah, you're putting yourself out there where people are already going. So it's yeah. worthwhile. Exactly. Okay, speaking of marketing, let's talk about your marketing. Um, yeah. What's been the evolution of that over the last? years of your business yeah definitely um so yeah everything's been really like natural and organic like I like I said in the beginning I just started an Instagram and I just started sharing photos of what I make um and so Instagram is something is a tool that I've always used and I guess my mindset is to be instead of like trying to sell to people I'm just sharing what I'm doing and I'm building a community and yeah, just being really natural about it. And I think people really appreciate that, Mm -hmm. but also having a strategy. So I, you know, I've invested as I could in Instagram courses and things Mm -hmm. like that so that you're not just doing things willy nilly. You've got a strategy (laughs) to do it. Um, And I also really love Pinterest. And I find Mm -hmm. that, you know, Instagram is a marketing tool that takes quite a lot of time, whereas Pinterest is something that you can set and then forget until the next time that you schedule your things. (laughs) Um, so they complement each other really well. And mm-hmm. I guess um, being a fashion brand, you know, I sort of put a lot of time and effort and resources into getting um, beautiful images of my work. Mm-hmm. So you might as well be using them on visual platforms. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a big benefit that handmade and correct, you know, craft businesses and, and design businesses like yours have is that you have lovely images. So, you know, of course, why wouldn't you use them and, and get them out there? And um, they, they do, you know, the whole picture says a thousand words. And they really represent your work and, and yeah. I think, you know, you, you do obviously because you have photo shoots for your launches yeah. and, you, you know, you get lots of different models. And so yeah. you've got that diversity uh, of models in there, which shows people the, you know, the possibilities, I guess, um, for them to wear your work as well. Yeah. And I think it's important for, like, I still have a long way to go with my brand for diversity, but for people to be able to see themselves Mm. in representation, like instead of, you know, only showing one, one, showing one type of body in the media, it's important to really try and show a different, um, like all different shapes and sizes, because people like to see that, like we don't, you know, it's important to represent everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, if people, I think people feel more comfortable with a brand when they do see that, um, especially if they don't fit the ideal body type. Um, yeah, you know, to to approach, you know, if they, they see that in your marketing, they'll they'll be more comfortable to you know buy from you and approach you and, and speak to you about. And especially if you know you're saying you do a lot of custom sizing for people, like, yeah. is all of your stuff custom size or just that's an option people have? 
Um, at the moment, yeah, it sort of evolved. When I first mm-hmm. started, it was just standard sizing. But because I was selling internationally, I was finding people would let me know their measurements anyway because they're like, oh, I hope I've ordered the right size. I live in America. Mm-hmm. Um, and also people would message me and be like, you know, I, I wear this size, but I have this issue. Like, you know, I'm really tall, so my body suits are too short. Um, so Story really, of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wear one piece togs. <laughs> yes. So yeah, it's very, yeah. It's so common. And even like, I'm the opposite. Like I'm really, I'm very short. So I have like a short torso. So they're too long. Like we're all so different. So it really just evolved to be the best thing to do because, um, yeah, people were really, there was a cry, cry for it. And, you know, if that's what your customers are crying out for, why would you not, you know, help them with that? Yeah, and being a small independent business, you know, you're making everything. Why wouldn't you? Because you have to make yeah. it custom anyway, right? Like you have yeah, to make exactly. every size like it's so all, everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's all made to order. So there's yeah. no reason why I wouldn't do it. And, yeah, I guess that's why I think, like, to me, being handmade and starting off making everything myself wasn't a disadvantage. Like, I think mm-hmm. it was an advantage because it meant that I could adapt to that and I could do made to order. I didn't have to sort of. A lot of times when people start a fashion label, they have to sort of, you know, have a, a bulk of stock made with a manufacturer and you would only be able to have set sizes, whereas I feel like it was a real blessing that I could do that myself. Mm. So you've got your Instagram, you've got your Pinterest, those are your mm. two main marketing channels. You've got Etsy as a marketing tool as well, of course. Yeah. Platform. Yeah. Um, are there any other things you've tried but that just haven't worked? What or that you have haven't enjoyed <laughs> yeah um I think my issue is like I want to do everything so I'd yeah. love to like be on TikTok I'd love to be making more reels on Instagram um and I want to do all the things and I guess that spreading yourself too thin is something that I can be very guilty of and thinking <laughs> that like this is a shiny object and I want to do this new strategy but it's like actually just get Instagram to a point where you're doing that so well and it's doing really well for you and trying to perfect the things that I'm already doing and then moving on to something else or yeah, like getting help in the business so that I can free up time to do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so again, real, I've been experimenting a bit with reels lately because it like, I feel like on Instagram now, that's all you see almost when you scroll through your feed, yeah. like half yeah. to two thirds reels. And it's like frustrating for those of us who usually just do posts. It's like, well, yeah. Do I, I just have to evolve with the platform? <laughs> you know? I think so. I know. And I guess I was really resistant. I am a little bit resistant to change, which is something yeah. I'm trying to work on. I'm a bit set in my ways. But I, when like, you know, TikTok and even the reels came out, I was just like, you know, it's amazing. But I was just like, how am I going to have time mm-hmm. to do this? Like, and I had a bit of a, you know, a bit of a mindset issue about it. Whereas now, you know, I'm trying to think, you know, how can I work this into things that I already do? So I already, if I make like a custom order, I'll already take a photo of it and share it and just sort of making sure I video it in a way that could be on my story and it could also be a reel. And I'm not staging those things. Like I'm literally just doing it as I'm making it. So it's not really any more effort. Um, But yeah, you know, a lot of us are small businesses. Like it's a lot of makers do it all by themselves and it can feel like there's so many things to do and not enough time so yeah yeah that is the eternal struggle yeah (laughs) and I and I think I think it's good for people maybe not good maybe it's terrifying but for people to realize (laughs) that never stops like it's not like you yeah I mean it does get easier like I I think after the first few years you've kind of learned a lot you've got things established you've got systems in place things do get easier but nothing outside of you stays the same so you have to be willing to evolve and change with what's going on which can be frustrating yeah. especially if you've like hit on something that's working really really well and then for some external reason suddenly it stops <laughs> working really well and you're like why yeah. what you know what, what I'm is gonna happening have to fix this. yeah I know yeah. and I guess yeah for me like the biggest journey has been like you know yeah you change is like the only constant mm-hmm. but just developing that confidence in myself and not having as much self-doubt that I'm like, well, yeah, like I actually don't know what's going to change or what's going to come up in the future. But now, you know, I've overcome, you know, challenges and I've been able to, yeah, conquer it all. (laughs) Yay. Okay. So uh, do you still just work by yourself or have you got people working with you now? Um, I, for a long time, it's just been me. And then recently I've hired some help in the business, which is so exciting. Um, (laughs) 
and it feels like a big relief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder why I was so stressed. <laughs> I was trying to do it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's sure. hard to admit help, like, as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I am the kind of person I want to do it all. Like, I'm like, why would I not? But, yeah, it's been, it's and it's quite a big process to go through hiring someone. Like, it's a huge time commitment. Um, so, yeah, I kind of wish I started a little bit earlier, to be honest, if I knew how long, um, yeah, finding the right person, training them, all that kind of stuff. But it's just one of those things that you learn from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I have a helper. Um, she's helping me in mostly in making orders at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. But it would be nice to sort of progress her to also help with like, you know, packing and sending orders as well. That would be awesome. Um, in the beginning, I thought maybe I would outsource my marketing instead and then I would do all the making but I then I realized that I actually love doing the marketing. <laughs> I didn't want to give it up. So it just kind of became clear that, you know, the next thing I was spending the most time on was making orders. So mm -hmm. it would be a good thing. Yeah. And it's exciting to teach yeah. someone and to see them enjoy making your product and sort of, yeah, it's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been through that myself in my business with Nick in the jewelry business, teaching him how to make things. And it's yeah. it's, it's it's challenging and it can be stressful because you're a bit of a, well, I don't know about you, but a bit of a control <laughs> freak, a uh, bit yeah. of a perfectionist, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I still quality control everything and he quality controls yeah. me too because I make some of the things and we kind of check yeah. each other's work and it's it's helpful to have that other person there and, you know, minimizes mistakes and things like that. So, yeah, it's, exactly. it's definitely, like you said, it's you kind of have that learning phase and then once you're over that, things are so much better and so much easier yeah. having that help there. Yeah, like you can do it all, but you don't have to. You can <laughs> have helpers. And and also like, uh, you know, like the sewing is something that I'm outsourcing, but also like photography, like I've never taken my own photos. I've mm -hmm. always sort of paid someone to do that. And there's been times where I sort of, I do have a camera, I don't mind taking photos, but I'm not a photographer. And I would, I love, you know, some people are really specialised in their skills and my photographer is incredible, like she, the work that she does. I could never do that. And it's really nice to pay someone who's an expert in their field to do that so I can focus on like what is my special thing. Mm. Mm. And I guess because you have to get models as well for your for your work, it kind of makes yeah. sense to set up a, a, a photo shoot for a day or whatever, yeah. and sort of hire all the people and make it happen. Yeah, definitely, yeah, to do it all in one, yeah. Mm. Was that like a big expense at the beginning? I imagine when you were just starting out, like to, to go through that was quite, oh my God, I'm spending all this money. <laughs> yeah, it can be. I guess um, I've always like being in the fashion industry and then, um, you know, being a student at a college, you meet a lot of people who also went to Australian Institute of Creative Design and, you know, they also teach photography. And so there's other like photographers and stuff around. So you sort of learn to collaborate. And right. I also... I was working um, while I was studying. I worked in a cafe and um, a girl that I worked with, she was a like studying photography and we would always say when we finished our courses, like we'd do a photo shoot together and then we did and, you know, that was something we just both volunteered our time mm -hmm. to sort of get to the point where we were happy with what we were doing and then we moved on to a paid arrangement because mm -hmm. I think it's really important to pay people for their work so that, you know, it's important. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, but there's definitely ways, you know, if you're starting out, there's always, you know, be open to reaching out to people and seeing if there's other people starting out like you and if you can sort of work together in a way like that. But it is a big expense. And I guess now, like, obviously, like, yeah, you've got to pay um, for your models, you've got to pay for your photo shoot. Um, and yeah, it can be expensive, but sort of, so I would do like, I wouldn't just photograph one or two items. Like I'd have a whole collection. I'm really strategic about making sure, you know, you're photographing enough items, mm -hmm. um, yeah, to make it worthwhile. Yeah. And I think, you know, that again, you're kind of harking back a bit there to that benefit of, of studying and you're in, in, and being part of the industry as well, because yeah. you make those connections, which I yeah. guess a lot of us who are just crafters or hobbyists, have just come to it by ourselves and perhaps don't have those connections but there yeah. are ways to make those connections in in the community as well yeah exactly and just being friendly like mm. just reach it you know like if I meet someone I just have a chat and you just never know who you're going to meet or if there's like 
yeah, like at a local market, get to know the people that are your, like the stalls around you. And, you know, sometimes, or even with COVID, we are at home, but having that same friendly approach to Instagram. Like if you see someone on Instagram and they have a really similar aesthetic and values to your brand, just be friendly and have a chat. And, you know, you might make a friend or you guys might do a fun collaboration together. You just don't know. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I think that's a really nice thing about, well, the nice part of social media, I guess, is making those connections with yeah. people. Um, <clears throat> back back in my day, when I started in the <laughs> like late 2000s, I had a, a wonderful Etsy team who were really helpful. Um, yeah. It made all the difference for me that I could ask questions and mm. you know get feedback from people who are a bit more experienced than me. This was mm. before Instagram existed, people. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I think there was Facebook and Twitter just at that point. Yeah. And I actually spent a lot of time on Twitter in those first few years. Um, it's kind of a precursor to what Instagram is today. We, you know, lots yeah. of people made connections there and, and chatted and things like that. So that was really, for, for me at the beginning of my career, the first few years, those connections were incredibly important because I really had no idea what I was doing. I didn't, you know, I had very little business background and I was only just learning my craft as well. So it was really helpful to have those people who I could learn from and then obviously, you know, teach and help other people as well and support other makers, um, which is what I ended up doing. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. And I actually got involved in some, you know, real, whoo, there goes my keyboard, in some real <laughs> life stuff as well. Like there's a, yeah. there's a um, organization in Brisbane called Bristyle, which yeah. started out as a um, Etsy team and has turned into a, so cool. something that is still going now. And I was like the vice president of that for a while. So I was involved in that for quite yeah. a few years. And so it was nice to make those connections and feel like you're part of something, part of a community. Yeah. It helps it, keep you motivated, I think. It does. And I guess that's something I didn't realize. Um, you know, I was so hell bent on like doing like lazy girl full time and then I got to that point and I'm like oh I feel really isolated mm. <laughs> where are all the people <laughs> um because I'm quite I don't think I'm an extrovert I think mm. I'm like an introvert that likes people around <laughs> mm -hmm. um so yeah it can be a little bit isolating and I guess when you're in a work environment you're all working towards like the common goal of that business and when it's your own business you know you're the person that's moving everything forward um and yeah, it can be a little bit isolating. And like you say, being part of like, yeah, Etsy teams or any sort of creative co-op in your local area, or if you can't find that, like doing it online, like in a membership community or something like that mm -hmm. is really helpful to, yeah, have that support system and people that just get it. Like they get, if you have something happen in your business, you know, my partner is so supportive. And my friends are really lovely and my mom's my biggest supporter, but, you know, they don't have a handmade business. So they're just like, sometimes they just can't relate. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, to have people that get it and yeah, just so you don't feel alone. <laughs> yeah, it's very helpful. I mean, that's, mm. that's why I started the Thriver Circle really originally, because I'm like, you know, people need community and, 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 and support. So finding yeah. something like that is really useful as well. It is. Highly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> you were in there for a while. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I love um, it. <laughs> so let's have a think. What have we got? Um, I haven't asked you yet. <clears throat> what's been like your biggest challenges over this journey? Like it's from from what you've been saying, it's actually it sounded really really great. Like it, you know, it's just it's all <laughs> happened. It's all evolved naturally. It's all been fantastic. It's I'm all sure been sunshine been, and rainbows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there have been some challenges along the way. There definitely have been. Um, I think, yeah, like the one constant is probably change and challenges mm -hmm. <laughs> in business. But yeah, I guess for me, um, the biggest challenge, like I mentioned before, was probably overcoming my own self-doubt. Like I think um, in the beginning, I lacked a lot of confidence and I felt like that almost crippled me. And I really was just so worried about it all. Um, and it can be hard. Yeah. And I guess I really wanted to, it was challenging to sort of have that. Uh, I really enjoyed having like the side income to sort of help me propel, but to get to that point where I could do it full time, mm -hmm. the hustle, like it's quite a lot of hard work um, and quite exhausting at times. Um, but just pushing through and really, yeah, having that belief in yourself. Like I think as a small business owner, you need to believe in yourself fiercely and be, you know, like I mentioned, I have an amazing support system, which I really appreciate, but you also have to be your own best supporter mm -hmm. um, and really becoming that person for yourself is what has sort of helped me to, yeah, keep going. And once you sort of 
sorry. You no, no, go ahead. <laughs> um, like you, like you say, just like to build your courage muscle. Like if you just start, you know, like you might have your first sale and then that is like the momentum that keeps propelling you. And yeah, just to keep going like that. But yeah, definitely hasn't, or yeah, always been sunshine and rainbows. Like, and I think that's the thing with like social media and any, like, you know, we tend to share our highlight reels mm. and everything sounds amazing. And you're like sitting at home, like, why is, you know, well, that's not my reality, like what's happening, but you know, people, and I think, you know, like when you listen to podcasts from other business owners, like yourself, like I really appreciate how honest you are with like your own challenges and yeah, like other makers, um, it just makes you feel like, oh, other people have had that problem too. And like, it's not like, I'm not the worst person in the world, like make a mistake, <laughs> learn from it and move on. Just don't like, don't keep making the same mistake, but yes. yeah, to give yourself that grace. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I think the self-confidence one is a huge one. And I think that is, that's one of the biggest issues I see people struggle with is that mm. belief and self-confidence. And so many, I've yeah. seen so many people over the years who just have never gotten going because they keep second guessing themselves. Yeah. And they're, they're trying to make everything perfect before they start. Don't yeah. do that. You can't, you yeah. cannot make everything perfect before you start. I agree. Just I know. let it evolve, develop it as you go, but start the thing. Because if you don't that start is. the thing, you can never start that, that process of evolving and developing. Yeah. And, I mean, it's funny, like, looking at you you know you're you're young like you started this quite young too yeah but i, I think 21. It's, yeah 21 but yeah. even so even people in their 50s 60s are still still even though they have the life experience they can still suffer from that self-doubt especially yeah. if say you've been working in a different career your whole life and then suddenly you, you know you want to make something and sell it like that just because you, you have confidence in one aspect of your life doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be confident in another aspect of your life. Um, you know, there are those people who are always confident in, in everything they do and that's fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, you know, don't let that stop you. It's, it's just yeah. don't let it stop you. <laughs> you, know, no, you can figure exactly. it out. You can make yeah. it happen. I agree. And like, yeah having just starting I really agree with that as well like I didn't looking back I'm like what did I know I knew nothing <laughs> I was a child <laughs> but maybe like that was helpful like mm. I don't now I think now I'm so yeah anxious about everything I'm like oh it was probably helpful because I was young and carefree I just was like oh well I'll give it a go and yeah yeah, mm. yeah and I love that idea that you know people are like oh it's too late or whatever and I saw a thing on Instagram and it was like, well, you know, if you don't want to like do a four year degree or something, like say you want to study in four years time, it'll still be four years later and you would have either done it or not, you know, like, yeah, what exactly. else, what have you got to lose? I guess yeah, is, is the, the time question. will pass anyway. Yeah, yeah. The time will pass anyway. So why, mm. why not give it a try? And if it doesn't yeah. work out, it doesn't work out. And that's okay. Like I've tried so many things that haven't worked out, but I've learned yeah. from them and that's what life's all about really. Exactly. And like not, um, I guess another challenge, I, you know, I'm so passionate about what I do and I've really been like striving for this for most of my young life. So I feel like a lot of my identity and self-worth is tied up in the work that I do, mm -hmm. which it's hard not to, like I yeah. make, I make everything and I, you know, I'm so passionate about this, but I've had to really, you know, change my mindset about that. Like, you know, I'm really excited about what I do. I love it so much, but not to get my validation and self-worth from work like you know you're doing good work you're making people happy that's amazing but you know not tying your whole identity to it is important as well because sometimes things don't work out and you know there's no one has a crystal ball like we don't know how it's going to go but having that confidence in yourself that if it all didn't work out then you can and you know you have the skills to rebuild something else yeah that's a really great way of putting it actually like you know every, every I, I look back at you know my my career my work before I, I sort of started the business and you know I never stayed in a job longer than I think two years was the longest and I just sort of went from job to job and these were like proper jobs you know like yeah. career jobs yeah. but I was like I was always very like if I don't if I'm not loving this thing I'm going to move on because life's too short yeah. to be doing something I I don't like doing <laughs> exactly I've had that philosophy as well and yeah, I sort of thought like, is there something wrong with me? Like, why can't I stick with things? But I just hadn't found my thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a while to find that thing. <laughs> yeah, but I don't regret any of it because it mm. brought me to where I am and it taught me a lot of lessons along the way that mm. have helped me, you know, along my journey. Like I still, like, you know, my first few years was in various teaching roles and then yeah. I was working 
in um, education, in it's like in a tuition centre as the manager. So I actually got yeah. some business training in that job, That's which so I'd good. never looked for, you know, yeah. before. But it has held me in good stead since then. Uh, you know, like I learnt. You know, I always. It's funny. Like growing up, my dad was a salesman, and um, I was like, I never ever wanted to get into business. Like it seemed so boring, and I had zero interest in it. Um, and you had that. You, I think people have that idea of sales as being icky, you know. And yeah. My dad's like one of the best people I know, so I know he wasn't like that. But it's still you have this idea that, you know, sales, oh, why would I want to do that? But then doing a job where I actually had to learn how to sell, I realized that, well, selling, it's, it's something that's easy to do if you believe in what you're selling. You know, if you 100%. actually think it's worthwhile and you think yeah. it's something that will make people's lives better, then yeah. it becomes easy like just natural because you're like hey this thing is really cool it will help you um why not check it out you know rather than feeling disingenuous and i think that's if we're trying to sell something we don't believe in that's where it doesn't work because we feel like sleazy or whatever so if you're making something you love and you believe in and you think other people will love and enjoy then Mm. reframe that in your mind like frame it as i'm i'm giving people an opportunity i'm sharing something with yeah. them. if they choose to take it up or not that's up to them but i'm excited about this thing like let that come across like let that love and that excitement for what you do come across in in your marketing you know in the storytelling yeah. you do about your business and you'll find that you'll connect with the people who feel the same way a hundred percent yeah <laughs> couldn't <laughs> add anything better to that <laughs> <laughs> so what has been kind of one of the most exciting things? What, was it like getting invited by that lingerie store? Would that be like one of the highlights of your business yeah, life so that was far? Def- yeah, it was definitely a fist bump <laughs> moment. Um, yeah, it's such a fangirl. So I was like, yes. <laughs> um, and yeah, like I've had other exclusive collections. So like a lingerie blogger, lingerie and literature reached out to me um, about doing an exclusive collection for her and it was like inspired um by literary works oh cool um yeah it was really cool and she donated a portion of um the designs to a charity that helps children um learning to read so that was a really beautiful initiative and it was just amazing and when these things happen I'm like you picked me like thank you so much for <laughs> letting me do this and yeah I never would have even dreamed that that would happen um And yeah, like those opportunities are so exciting, but also just hearing from a happy customer. Like Mm. I've had, I make a lot of like bridal lingerie. um, So it's a special moment in someone's life. And I've put a lot of time and care into making it just right for that person and their body. And sometimes brides will, like I've had people send me like a card or a gift in the mail or send me like a photo from their boudoir shoot. And they're like, I've never seen myself like this. Like, I feel amazing. Thank you so much. And like, I literally like cried. Like it just (laughs) makes me feel so like, I can't believe like I was able to do that for you and play a small role in helping them to feel like that. So those are probably like the biggest you know obviously like these achievements like they are like you love them but having Mm. that meaningful contribution to someone's life like that's probably the biggest fist bump for me yeah I I would agree with that like when you hear Mm. from a really happy customer who has a story to tell about how your your product has made a difference in their life that's that's a really amazing feeling definitely Mm. (laughs) (laughs) um so looking forwards do you have sort of a, 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 a roadmap, a, a business plan, or are you sort of just going where the winds take you? Um, I've definitely learned to, yeah, like have some sort of plan. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I find is like I have like a three-month plan. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this quarter I'm working towards this. And I have a rough vision for like the year ahead. But I guess, you know, COVID's been a really good teacher that in three months the whole world can change. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I think that's a good period of time to be like I'm working on this aspect of the business, I'm doing these collections mm-hmm. and then adapting as I go. Um, but moving forward, like a big project. Um, so I've been teaching like in-person sewing classes with a um, sewing studio in Brisbane, which, um, I really love doing so much and I'd love to do more of that online. So Mm -hmm. I'd love to do like online sewing classes. And I think there's a real need for lingerie, um, specific ones, Mm -hmm. um, and to do more kits and uh, uh, downloadable patterns. I have a few, but I just haven't really had the time to, um, do more of that so I guess that's what really pushed me to outsource some of 
um, the making of my product as well because I was like trying to do these things and just never finding time to do it. So I'm like, well, there's obviously an issue here. (laughs) (laughs) I'd love to do more of that. Yeah. I guess long term, like I'd love to have a studio to work from. Um, Not really a store, more like a studio where like Mm -hmm. we go and work and maybe teach workshops. I wouldn't mind like doing appointments, but I don't think I would want to have like a retail store. Mm -hmm. Um, But that would be like a long term goal. But putting it out there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I, I mean, for your business, I think I love the idea of like, you know, a, a by appointment boutique because you could make yeah. it an experience, especially for brides. Like that sounds exactly. like the sort of thing yeah. that people would love to do, like with their, mm. you know, with their bride bridesmaids or whatever. You know, come yeah. along, and have some champagne and cake, and get your measurements and pick your designs and all that sort of exactly. stuff. Like they yeah. do at bridal shops, I guess, like the high end bridal yeah. shops. Yeah, I'd love to do something like that. So yeah. <laughs> see how we go (laughs) all the possibilities are out there that's exciting and Mm -hmm. yeah I I think what you said about you know COVID being a good teacher is we can have all these concrete plans in place but sometimes (laughs) things go out the window and we just have to evolve and and adapt and and figure out how to make it happen they really do (laughs) yeah I'm curious about um your design process as well do you have do you do it now are you at the point where you kind of have cycles that you just say every three months or six months you've like bring out a new collection is it that mm. is it that like clockwork or is it a bit more organic it's definitely a bit more organic mm-hmm. um so i've been making you know so i've like this is six years into the business so some of the designs that i sell are like you know the ones i started with in my mm-hmm. first collection um but you obviously, like, as time goes, you sort of take out ones that aren't working. You might re- try to, you know, rephotograph them or tweak the design so that um, it is, you know, p- mm-hmm. perhaps more, yeah, people would like it more. Um, but, yeah, bringing out new designs is a big part of my work. I know you do more, like, um, you know, you don't release collections that often. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I'm, like, bringing out new work probably every two to three months. But okay. it's not... It's not like set in stone. I mm-hmm. think I sort of have a rough idea, but I do sort of go with the wind <laughs> a little bit. If I have an idea I and I just share it on Instagram, I put up a story. Like when I had the idea for the loungewear, it was a little bit different. Like they're mm-hmm. different fabrics to what I work with. Um, and I didn't, after a while, you sort of worry. I'm like, oh, is it going to be too different? Mm-hmm. But I put up a story and I had, had never had so many like, heart eye emoji <laughs> so I was like okay I think I'm onto something here <laughs> yeah so I think like having the plan but being flexible to adapt with that as well yeah and I love what you said there about like you know if you've built up an audience like take advantage of that audience and actually yeah ask them what they want you know yeah and be adaptable <laughs> yeah in? yeah yeah like I really I listen to my customers like if they are like, I need this, like I make that happen because like, you know, my clients are so important to me. Like they are the lifeblood of my business and I want to give them, give the people what they want. <laughs> yeah. And if you give the people what they want, then they'll buy it. So that's yeah. a win-win for yeah. everybody really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, did you happen to bring a quote with you today that you I did. Okay. So I had to because I couldn't decide. That's I, okay. Tell I us did Okay, I did a practice with my mom for this interview and she liked both of them, so I'm like, I'll read both. <laughs> um, all right, where is my quote? I cannot find it, but I okay, I remember it. So my first one is life is what you make it. So I've had that pinned up on my wall for as long as I can remember. Um, and it just, yeah, that's just my philosophy on life, basically. Like I've always been hell-bent on creating a life that... I feel really excited to wake up and live. Like to me, life is such a precious gift. Like I'm, I just want to seize every moment. And I think work is an important part of that. Like we spend so much time of of our lives working. So it might as well be doing something that we love and are passionate about. Um, And then the second quote is success. True, It's like, I can't even remember it properly, (laughs) but it's like true success is measured by how you make other people feel. And that really like hit me in the heart because I'm like, I'm, you know, building this life that I really love, but I really want to do good work and help, you know, enjoy my life and help other people feel good as well and make that meaningful contribution. So, yeah. (laughs) That's all. Yeah. Life is what you make it. That's it. It's so short, but it's so poignant and true and yeah I think you know 
I don't know whether people are more aware these days. I guess the internet's giving us a lot more possibilities than we had before of ways to live our lives. And, um, you know, it's funny thinking, like, because you're, what, probably about 15 years younger than me or something. So you've grown up with the internet being there and it's always been a possibility. Um, whereas when I was younger, you know, it was still, you know, you go to university and you get a job and that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah, you know, bit, people who do business go do a business degree and then they yeah. join a company. And you know, like this idea of like starting my own small business was something that only really occurred to me in my mid-teens when the internet arrived. It's like I wonder if there's a way to like make money from the internet. Oh, maybe one yeah. day I'll figure that out. And I did, so that's nice. So I guess I I put that little seed of possibility there when I was young, but you know, it took yeah. me a while to figure it out. So I think people are more aware now of the possibilities out there and, you know, there's all these yeah. ways to do side hustles and, and make money yeah. and uh, it's sort of freed people up to be a bit more creative with their lives than perhaps they, they could have a little bit earlier in time. I think so. And I agree. Like I remember when we did like a careers year, um, unit in high school, my guidance counselor, I was like, I want to be a fashion designer. And she's like, well, I don't know how to help you with that. <laughs> like, you know, it's not like anyone was like, oh, like, you know, you'll be great at that. I just thought, I just was like, I want to do this. So I'm just going to figure out how to do that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, like, I think there's a lot more creative careers. Um, and, you know, we get inspired by other people. You see other people, you know, doing something that they love and, yeah, you're like, I could do that too. <laughs> and <laughs> using, you know, like sometimes you can look at someone who's doing really well and feel like, you know, I could never do that. But to really flip your mindset and let it inspire you of what's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, if somebody else has managed to do it, chances are you can probably figure out how to do it at least exactly. to some extent as well yeah you know yeah so nothing's impossible out there for the you know if you really have a dream you want to make it happen i'm a you know big believer in figure it out and making it happen again what have you got to lose except a bit exactly. of time <laughs> <laughs> so true <laughs> well Cass, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today where can people go to find your work and more about you absolutely um so the best place would be my website so lazygirllingerie.com and then I also have an Etsy shop and Instagram and Facebook and they're all just lazy girl lingerie. So And the most important question yeah. I haven't asked you yet is how did you come <laughs> up with the name of your business? <laughs> um, so when I started, I didn't know what to call my business and I wanted it to be a good name, but I had no idea. So I just started with my name, Cassandra, um, because I didn't want it to hold me back. I thought, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I just thought I'll get started and I'm sure I can figure out a good name later. Mm -hmm. And then it literally just dropped into my head one day. It was about a year or so after the business um, had started, I guess, because like that's what the product is. Like it's um, easy to wear comfortable pieces that you can be lazy in. Like it's exactly what I wanted the brand to be. And I guess I identify as a bit of a lazy girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I think other people do like whenever I've done like um, trade shows or market stalls and things like that people are like yes I'm a lazy girl so it's nice like people can it resonates <laughs> yeah and I think it also makes it a bit I don't know it makes it feel more comfortable and, yeah. and accessible like yeah um I'm not a big lingerie person but sometimes you know you walk past it in the shop or whatever and it all feels very mm, I don't, you know like oh <laughs> <laughs> whereas, whereas your the name of your business it just kind of evokes chill you know like I can yeah. I can wear something pretty but just lie around on the couch in it too and, and yeah, be comfortable exactly. <laughs> yeah yeah and that's the whole kind of yeah and I guess I try to capture that in like my branding as well like mm. you know a lot of the images are just yeah like chilling like the last photo shoot we did we had pizza <laughs> like you know the girl was eating pizza in her lingerie and I think that's like relatable <laughs> yes I love that it's you know it's not all about the the sexy posing and whatnot it's about you know yeah. I can look beautiful and be comfortable as well isn't that yeah. nice exactly <laughs> i love that about your business so Thank i'll have you. to go, i haven't seen the pizza photo i'll have to go have a look at that one <laughs> i tagged the pizza place as well <laughs> awesome. uh, love just it, for love funny it. yeah no that's great thank you so much Cass. it's been a pleasure to watch your business evolve over the last few years and i'm so proud of what you managed to accomplish so well done thank you so much jess and i'm so grateful for you for having me and also for all your help through the Thriver Circle community. Um, 
I really, yeah, like joined at the beginning and I credit like a lot of my success and work to the help that you have given me um, in terms of like the business aspect. And I really appreciate it so much. <laughs> well, you are like, see, this is, you know, about making your customers happy, making you, helping your students to create the life they want to live. This is like the best thing a teacher can ever have is seeing their students become successful and, and do what they want to do. So yeah, it's awesome. Well done. And you're just going to get even better over time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's very kind of you to say. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being on the show and I will no doubt see you on the Instagrams. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Alrighty. See you later. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I would love to know your biggest takeaway from today. If you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments below. And if you're listening to the show, please reach out on Instagram. I'm at create and thrive. Send me a message and let me know the number one thing that's kind of stuck with you from today's interview. I always love to hear from podcast listeners. Thank you so much for being with me here today and I'll be back again soon with another episode of the podcast. Make sure you don't miss it by subscribing. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and if you're listening to the show, you can subscribe to the Korean Thrive podcast as well and uh, that way you won't miss any future episodes. I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye for now.